The hug is a parametric digital sculpture. This video is about how we made it and all the experiments along the way. At the end, we'll show you the full final render. We started by taking hundreds of photographs of two people hugging. We had to hold our pose completely still because any movement would make us look deformed when turned into a 3D model. For this piece, we needed to scan both people separately. So we carefully set up tripods to support our limbs while the other person climbed out of the embrace. One less technical side note, it was important to work with two people who actually wanted to be hugging. If the pure human emotion isn't present in the source, no amount of digital wizardry can put it there. On the technical end, we also switched from photos to capturing videos so that the hugger could be captured quicker and their inevitable movement would be less problematic. Video has less detail in it than photos, but the trade-off between resolution and human movement made the final 3D model more accurate despite using a lower quality data set. We uploaded the videos to Polycam, and when the mesh was ready, we decimated it so that it had fewer triangles and would be easier to work with in Rhino. We manually cleaned the meshes in Blender to remove the tripods and close the holes, as well as align the models because they had shifted slightly during capture. For our first experiment, we subtracted one hugger's body from the others so that you could see the imprint that a hug leaves on them. The invisible hugger. This ended up not looking like much and it was a ton of work and it kind of totally failed to convey the emotion that we wanted. So for our second experiment, we exported them and brought them into Rhino and Grasshopper. We stretched the model's legs so that they would look delicate and precarious in their hug by translating each vertex in the mesh downwards exponentially according to its distance from a parametrically set midpoint threshold. That's a lot of words that just mean you get to choose where you want to start stretching them. But this didn't really convey the emotion either. For our third experiment, we 3D printed the mesh. We wrote our own 3D printing toolpath in Grasshopper to control the look and the feel of the hugger. We experimented with a few different ways to print the form including printing just the outlines of the triangles so the huggers would be see-through, and printing the huggers as melting. This last one certainly evoked something. For our final experiment, we deconstructed the mesh to get a list of each face on it, as well as its normal. The normal is basically which direction the face is facing. We drew a NURBS curve based on a ginkgo leaf that we found under a tree, and deformed it to match the curve of our real leaf. Then we made a copy of the leaf for every face on the model's mesh, and we translated our new leaf's position onto the mesh. This ended up crashing Grasshopper, because there were 2,000 faces, so all of a sudden we had 2,000 leaves. So we created a sparseness control slider, so that while we continued to write code, our computer would still function without having to recompute 2,000 ginkgo leaves every time. We also randomized the leaf's Z direction, so that the whole sculpture looked more organic. Finally, we created a script to generate planes for the leaves blowing off of the mesh. We take in the original mesh and we use its maximum and minimum values, as well as a wind direction and a wind force to randomly create new leaves flying off the figure in the right direction. We also multiplied the X and Y values of the leaves by their own exponents so that we could cluster the leaves around the model. And then right at the end, we used that sparseness control that we had made to get rid of half the leaves because it just felt right. Ultimately, this was an iterative process. Making anything has ups and downs where you have an idea, and then you build it, and then you wonder if it's actually doing the thing you want it to, and then you try something new. We hope you like where we ended up and have a better sense of how to make something like this yourself.